Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Pegasus, developed by Optimus and published by Gremlin Graphics and released to the public in 1991. The game begins with a great digitized screenshot in hand mode and also a story. Satan, Lord of Evil, was it to gain ultimate power countless men. To fulfill his evil ambition, he had to gain control of four planes of existence. Mother Nature's paradise turned into a desolate wasteland. Death's tranquil domain has become a tortured creeping mass of undead souls. Fate's careful hand of destiny has been frozen, halted for all eternity. War, never a welcome visitor, has been unleashed to wreak a million deaths, with the Guardians destroyed he placed within each plane a demon of his own creation. The planet's only hope of salvation lies with Perseus and the help of the wizard Chan, known to many as the Hand of the God. After running many miles, Perseus, exhausted, finally reaches Chan's castle. He fears entering this dark, gloomy place world's needs are great. So, summoning his last reserves of strength and courage, Perseus runs towards the forbidding door. <laughs> Chan had known that a hero would come forward to Fight the evil that had devoured the land. To aid Perseus in his quest, Chan gave him a magical sword, shield armor, and Pegasus. Perseus knew what he had to do. Intro, we get to see a title screen with that epic music created by Barry Leach and by pressing the P key we can actually enter the password to enter one of the five worlds in this game. If you don't have a clue of any of the passwords of course you're going to have to press fire and go to play this game from level one. Magitech Design is another name for Barry Leach, that was his design company, which created the sound effects and the music for this game. So let's press fire, let's check this game out. In Pegasus, we control the character Perseus, who begins the game aboard Pegasus and it is our aim at this point to collect the gems which are dropped by killing a number of enemies and each one of those gems will rack up and eventually buy us some power-ups and some health upgrades as well. You can see the health is represented by the sword on the very bottom of that screen 
the white area shows our health and the black space at the end shows that we've used some of that and the brown area shows our emergency health which we'll certainly need to get into in this play guide because as you can see one such of those enemies decreases our power and you can see also the lives on the bottom we have three lives with every continue and we get a number of continues as well we can also activate energy waves if we collect those with the scrolls you can see and then the arm at the bottom corner you can see the strength is now number one by holding down the fire button and pushing up we can then activate those and we now have two of those and in the bottom corner you can see the diamonds collected we have five at the moment let's collect that one and the mushroom on screen of course is a smart bomb during these flight levels we can pick up extra weapons and smart bombs and things which will get rid of these enemies for us but for the main we'll have to wade through with whatever firepower we have and that will change in the very bottom corner once we have enough diamonds to upgrade it 10 diamonds gave us this current weapon with 15 diamonds collected you can see a new weapon has been highlighted in the bottom corner and that will remain there all we need to do is to press the space bar and that will activate you have to collect the power-ups in order so unfortunately if we collect any more diamonds that will still remain in the bottom corner so let's activate that and change our normal weapon into now a three-way dagger fest and hopefully that will mean that we can take on those aliens and collect some more of those crystals and you can see in the background to so these flight levels even though they don't last too long you can see some nice lightning and some clouds in a parallax formation as well as parallax in the foreground as well at the end of this flight section our hero will dismount from pegasus and perseus will carry on through the next level on foot with the aid of his trusty sword the first world in this game is the wilderness and in the wilderness the graphics are rather plain as you can see but still up there with nes quality graphics you can see if i hold down fire and push up then that's the energy blast and just like turrican that should get rid of everything on that screen you can see as we collide with these aliens our power bar will be decreasing so luckily if we collect 15 diamonds on this level then that gives us the chance to activate the repair kit and the health repair kit there you can see by pressing the space bar that gives us full health back so that means if we can survive the five levels of the pegasus level and we can get onto the perseus level we can survive and get those first aid kits and restore our energy you can see yellow objects like meteorites storming down from the top and those are extra weapons and power-ups as well and you can see a mid-level boss which well on this game sometimes you can simply run away from those bosses and avoid those but that will give us an extra strength power-up should we take that out and once again these meteors can contain diamonds as well so it's certainly worth collecting those and because we have no time limit on these levels we can hang around and we can milk these to death and pick up all these power-ups at our leisure the only thing that we can't do is collide with these because you can see it takes 15 crystals to gain the first aid kit and we're almost on emergency power already And whenever we die we gain a great effect and when that happens you will flash blue for a second and you can see our health has restored all the way up again so this game begins very easily and the learning curve is very easy and as long as you repeatedly hammer that fire button and you stand in the correct spot to save that energy then it won't take too long to progress from level to level I think it's great that the adventure is broken into the horizontal shooter and that certainly breaks up the action and we can gain a number of power-ups unfortunately we cannot collide with the ground that will damage our health 
but we can go straight through that ground in an emergency should we need to and as you can see now we're on the level three we gain ground based attackers as well you will certainly find an increased diversity of enemies on the later levels and it's a shame that on this first level the enemies really don't diversify a great deal the skull snakes remind me of virtually every other shooter on the face of the planet but in this game they aren't particularly hard to take out and now that we have upgraded that weapon again with a nice auto fire joystick this level is a dream but I'm actually hammering away on that zip stick fire button and this is as fast as I can shoot. Now that we're on minimum energy again, we're going to have to survive all the way to that next platform level in order to increase that. And in the meantime, hanging around in the very centre of that screen, jamming that fire button, means that we can take on virtually all of these enemies. And a few more scrolls make sure that we have a few more power lines to activate on that next level. And so I think at this stage the atmosphere is great in this game and the graphics are certainly great and this was certainly no budget release, this was a 25 quid game. So with 25 pounds on offer you expect this to be a little more extra special than your usual Amiga fare. But now that we are powered up, it's certainly crucial to get those Project X style weapons on the go. And then you can lay into these enemies and they will contribute to your firepower on every level. So if you return back to the Pegasus level, you'll find your previous firepower intact. So you can continue building that up. That means that we can soon have maximum firepower and that means getting through these enemies is absolutely no problem. I think it's great that we have lightning and we can hear the rumble of thunder as well when that lightning cracks and I think it's a great sound effect and I think the explosions of the enemies make a great sound effect as well nice and bassy so in general the sound effects in this game are great even though there is no music outside of the title music that we heard at the beginning of this game let's move on to level four and yet again it's another platform section unfortunately we do not get our energy restored but you can see we did manage to collect the 15 gems on the previous section so by pressing spacebar that's our health all the way back up to the top and there is a delay on the fire button that guy will sweep out his sword and if the enemy is on the end of that then they will die but that delay does take some time to get used to and it's one of the things which prevents this game being an absolute classic. I think the platforming action, particularly on these early stages, is at this stage rather samey and there aren't too many puzzles to work out either. And so it's a case of marching straight over to the exit. You can find extra bonus sections as well and extra special aliens and enemies are appearing. And yes, the enemies will diversify greatly on the later levels, but unfortunately we aren't going to get to see those in this playthrough. We are playing the first world at the moment, and the 10 levels of the first world take somewhere near 25 minutes to get through, and that's basically as far as we're going to get through in this play guide. And you can see the enemies come think of fast, they aren't really difficult to attack and they aren't really difficult to avoid either sometimes you can duck and wait for those to disappear off the screen but by attacking those yet again i've got that full energy back you can see the gradual learning curve approaches the first moving platforms as we move closer to the castle and we'll have to attack various castles and storm various bosses but again the mid bosses oftentimes you can simply run away from those or you can use all your plasma power just to get rid of those in one shot. Pegasus came on two discs and only required the standard amount of memory to load, so hopefully these graphics don't take too long to load off that disc. I'm of course using the WHD version at the moment and the loading times are at a minimum. 
but yet again it's the familiar territory of the horizontal shooting level and whenever we die we gain a great classic effect of us disappearing off that screen surrounded by an energy shield and if that happens three times then unfortunately it's game over and you'll have to continue on to progress any further the score will not reset so that's good it means we can continue from where we left off and one degrade of firepower will be removed so that we are now degraded back to the knives again but it's again now with three continues and three brand new lives and some more enemies now the tornado enemies appearing in the sand dunes as we waste our time going through these wastelands then the atmosphere of the game really does pile up and because of the ever increasing learning curve and the very easy nature of this game to get into the player will get far very quickly I'd say the graphics are certainly above average and there is no slowdown involved and these graphics scroll very smoothly on the native Amiga so there is no problem on that front. The colours are a little bit of a letdown but as I say the game is marred severely because the first 10 levels are very samey and as you will see at the very end of the review the last levels are full of colour, full of diverse enemies and are a real joy but the first levels don't really encourage the player to move very far even though it's very easy to do that. Pegasus was developed by Optimus and Optimus converted many of the Dizzies to the Amiga including Fancy World Dizzy and Spellbound Dizzy, Bubble Dizzy and Fast Food for Codemasters and Optimus worked with Codemasters releasing games like Mean Machine, SAS Combat Simulator, Seymour Goes to Hollywood and converting Pro Powerboat Simulator as well. All of these were conversions from the C64 as well as Big Nose the Caveman which we may cover later on this series. This game was designed by Neil Hill and co-designed by Adrian Ludley. Neil Hill was the main coder and he also worked on fast food, Big Nose the Caveman and Mean Machines and the graphics in this game were co-created by Adrian Ludley and Mike Musket. They individually worked on fast food and Mean Machine and Powerboat Simulator and the ones that we've mentioned already Optimus predominantly coded all their games for Codemasters. This was the only exception. This was a full price release, $24.99. And the music was created by Barry Leach, that great music on the title screen. And of course, he also created music for games such as Lotus 2, Supercars 2, Gemini Wing, The Humans, Harley Quinn, and The Airborne Ranger. This game was released on the Amiga and the Atari ST and the same crew were behind both releases and certainly Neil Hill and Adrian Ludley were the forces behind this game and you may be surprised to learn that there was a recent conversion to the Blackberry device as well. So this game has spread along a number of machines but isn't really known much among any of those and this game is very long it would certainly take three hours to complete this in one sitting so it's great that after every world we gain a password but we will not gain a password at the end of this review because we will not get to the end of the world i think despite the energy ball that we can emit by holding down the fire button and pushing upwards I think that is a great feature from Turrican but that doesn't really go full screen and you can use that on the flight section as well as the adventure section just by holding down the fire button if you have any of that strength. We have one strength shield left that we can use and I think that's great but the normal sword action jabbing and poking at those enemies is rather bland 
and it's not really easy to jump on top of the enemies because they will still wipe our energy so it means that we have to take those on directly in front of us and we can't actually attack by leaping over them and holding down the fire button and hoping to jab those from above either so I think the attack moves are rather limited the enemy patterns are rather limited and maybe a few more enemy types per level or changing those per level would have done this game the world of good I think the game itself is solid the jumping running action is great and many magazine reviewers commented on the great horizontal shooter especially when you have full power-ups on your side you can have outriders and things like that you can see I've managed to find myself the rear daggers which isn't amazing for this level but it means you can throw those things in front and if those things miss then they can hit enemies behind as well which is quite a good feature and quite a unique weapon you can see the enemies now pouring out of that castle like tin soldiers and it's a bit like megalomania this game really tramples on those soldiers and you can really now attack these levels so I think the shooting levels these horizontal levels are great and it does give us the power-ups to progress through those but you can see our energy yet again on minimum so sometimes it's the art of avoiding most of the enemies in this game simply to survive onto the next level so as we now accrue yet another 15 gems to get the health back yes this game tends to be a little repetitive in general I find Pegasus is a very absorbing game and it's very quick to get into and it's easy to amaze the player with these great effects and these graphics the fighting sword action is very limited but the graphics on offer are good enough well they are quite good enough in fact and better than many games on the Amiga but certainly not the best that the Amiga has to offer I think the sound is great and there is no music unfortunately that would have helped this game greatly some great combat music would have meant we can really attack these levels head on but that wasn't to be and unfortunately the slight delay means that the sword fighting action is a little bit limited so there are just one or two things which annoy this game and save the player from progressing all the way from world 1 onto world 2 I think I've got all the way across to world 2 certainly not made it to world 3 and it's that type of thing which makes this game an action fest and we really should be getting excited right now to take on all these enemies the magazine reviews also had a mixed opinion about this game see you amiga rated it 48 percent amiga format gave this 61 percent Amiga Joker gave it 64, which is also the current score on the Lemon Amiga database. Amiga Power gave Pegasus 69%. Amiga Computing Issue 43 gave it 80%. Amiga Action gave it 85 And Acar Magazine was the highest score with 88%. That gives Pegasus an average score of 7 out of 10. On the Amiga we have found a split decision and I have no idea which way to go at this point. The levels stop becoming very linear and these scorpions actually remind me of Pitfall on the Atari 2600 and familiar scorpions, certainly something that the player can get used to and now that we are out again unfortunately we don't have any light effects. This is not like Risky Woods where we enter caves and have great light effects in the background and we don't have the attack patterns and the enemies of Risky Woods either but compared to many games on the Famicom, the NES machine this certainly stands up and shows that the Amiga could have done many of the conversions which appeared on the NES and sometimes the Super NES as well and I'm not quite sure if it's possible now to get that gem I don't think so just like many platformers there is no way back so if you miss time a jump or if you miss something there is no way back but here we are this is our last life and our last patch of energy this is the last level that I will be showing you in this player guide 
I certainly have great respect for this game, and we even have one more continue should we venture onto that second world, but for now let's not choose to continue so we can choose to enter our name on that high score table. Let's just dab our name in there and we can use the keyboard in this instance and let's just enter our name unfortunately we do not know our current score until we enter that into the higher score table 69 is our highest and that was apparently 63,000 so not quite high enough on the Lamin Amiga database you can find more screenshots this is the wilderness level and after that you will also find the forest which is nice and green with similarly forested airborne levels as well and you also find the ice world which is another 10 stages and a great stage with great colours and great parallax as well and you also find the city of the dead where we get to race around on the top of rooftops and we get to enter the castle itself and the crypt where we'll find the devil and take him on so I think this game had bags of potential, it's certainly great, but it's not the greatest game on the Amiga. If you would like to see and hear the full story of the Commodore Amiga, I'm currently running a Kickstarter campaign in order to fund the licensing of endless photographs in order to create a video of the history of the Amiga. And so if you want to help me with the licensing, which will cost a fortune, I'm running Kickstarter at the moment, please check that out. Thank you for watching another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review.